Hello, everybody. A few years ago, um, I remember something about Rush Limbaugh on the radio, which, which is, he was somebody I would listen to, you know, for, for better, for worse, for all of his, all of his faults. Um, I still would listen to him regularly and he was entertaining and he was, uh, often, he often made good points. I mean, there was a, there was, I think there was a limited degree to which one could, uh, one could, uh, uh, take his, his, uh, his general, uh, ideology or philosophy to heart, but, uh, it still came in handy in a lot of cases, uh, I found. And Rush was certainly very good at tooting his own horn. Uh, that's something I'm not so good at. I'm a very humble guy. I'm, I'm so humble. Um, so very, very humble, and, uh, I, I just cannot bear to, uh, you know, to thump my chest and say, see, I was right, I was right, but I need to, it's a new year, it's a new me, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm going to be less humble in, in the new year, I'm going to be, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, be more shameless and, uh, self-promoting, that's what I've decided for the new year, at least for this video I am. Um, this is something I, I found out about myself that I, I was actually quite prophetic and, uh, uh, you can see, see me, this, this handsome fellow. This is me from a couple of years ago, April of 2022. You can still see the sort of youthful glint in my eye, which, uh, is no longer there. That, that, uh, that youthful glint has gone out, um, and, uh. Uh, as I, uh, as I approach senility, but back then, uh, you know, uh, what was it? Yeah. Uh, 21 months ago <laughs> when I was, uh, when I was just a strapping youth, um, I, uh, I was very prophetic. I, I had something to say about what was then only developing the geopolitical nightmare that was only developing in Ukraine. Um, and, uh, let's, let's hear, let's hear me out a little bit here. And then, uh, I'll, I'll show you, uh, how I, wh how I have indeed been an oracle on this, this subject. Hey guys, you're my buds, right? You're my buddies. I can share things with you. I can get things off my chest because we're friends and, uh, <laughs> we can talk about stuff. I don't know why I, I began this video uh, in that manner. Um, but I do want to bring up something to y'all that I see as a distinct actual possibility unfolding soon. Um, I don't think this is at all implausible, even though it will sound extremely implausible. Let me run by you the scenario that I see uh, perhaps unfolding um, shortly. We all know, of course, what's going on in Ukraine right now. And there's, there's a huge push uh, to get involved, to, to show your virtue by getting, uh, by signaling that you want uh, to help Ukraine fight back against the evil Russians. Now, um, one thing that pro problematizes all of this, of course, is the fact that it, it seems that much of the Ukrainian army and much of the Ukrainian population, I don't know exactly how many, I don't know what percentage exactly, but a significant uh, percentage of them are, uh, are um, if not Nazis, then are uh, very uh, uh, Nazi-esque. Uh, certainly Nazi sympathetic. And I don't think there's any real dispute about this. I don't think anyone um, could argue. Uh, I, I mean, people have tried to say, no, that's all just fake news or whatever. But there's so much information out there. Uh, again, go if you don't know what I'm talking about at all, if you think I'm just full of it, go to uh, your search engine of, uh, of uh, preference and uh, type in Stephen Stephen Bandera, 
type in Azov Battalion, type in Right Sector. Um, those are a few things that, that should get you started as far as this goes. These aren't just people, I don't think these are just people LARPing <laughs> as, uh, as Nazis. I think these are, these are actual neo-Nazis. And moreover, a big part of uh, the, the way that Putin, uh, when he spoke of the invasion and the reasons for it, uh, he, one, of the, one of the things that he emphasized was he wanted to uh, uh, denazify Ukraine. So what I'm seeing as a distinct possibility in the near future, if not the near, near future, if not the near, near, near future, and perhaps later today, we're going to start to see this. Um, that, you know, we, we're going to be kind of encouraged to go easy on, on the Nazis. We're going to be kind of, you know, this, this, this uh, most evil ideology that ever existed, like, as we've been told for the last 50, 60 years, it's going to be sort of like, well... You know, uh, let's let's not really emphasize that. You know, let's not be too stridently anti-Nazi because you know who's really you know who's against the Nazis. You know who's against Nazis? Putin. Putin is against Nazis. Are you saying you like Putin or something? Is that what you're saying? You know, so just cool it with the the uh, the anti-Nazism. Um, all right, that was me in April of 2022. Now, let's skip ahead in time just a little bit. This is a, an article that I actually cover in, an, in another video, but I, I just figure rather than showing you another video of mine and being even more self-referential, let me just go over this article again more briefly than I did in that video, and I'll leave a link to, to that video if you want to see, uh, you know, what I had to say about it in greater detail. This was the the uh, Hunka scandal, um, and this is in Politico, which is a fairly mainstream um, uh, journal of the Lugan Press. And the, uh, the headline reads, Fighting against the USSR didn't necessarily make you a Nazi. Um, as I point out, uh, that's, there, there's something, there's intellectual dishonesty in this very title, because no one is saying that fighting against the USSR necessarily made you a Nazi. No one said that. Um, so already they're attempting to frame it in a way that's, that's weaselly. So, um, Hunka was, uh, a, um, um, a former SS trooper. Yaroslav, they even, they even acknowledge he's a former SS trooper. Uh, the SS, okay? Those guys who wore the death heads and the death head, uh, emblem and, and did some, some, uh, some pretty, uh, unspeakable things across Eastern Europe. Um, he was one of them. So the uh, ongoing turmoil over Canada par Canada's parliaments recognizing former SS trooper Yaroslav Hunka highlights one of the most important reasons why about uh, a lie can make it halfway around the world before the truth has even got its boots on. All right. Um, something that's untrue but simple is far more persuasive than a complicated, nuanced truth. Okay. A major problem for Western democracies trying to fight disinformation and propaganda by countering it with the truth. And that's why only one reason why fact-checking and debunking are only of limited use in doing so. Okay. Um, in the case of Yuroslav Hunka, the mass outrage stems from his enlistment with one of the foreign legions of the Waffen-SS fighting Soviet forces on, the, on Germany's Eastern Front. Um, so he's SS, he's, he's with the Waffen-SS, He's a Nazi, okay? <laughs> you can say that doesn't make him a Nazi. He's fighting with a Nazi battalion. Uh, he's he's uh, the, he's fighting. He's an SS member. Uh, I don't know what why why uh, suddenly you want to make distinctions 
and say, well, he's he's less bad, or he's not really a Nazi, uh, or or he's not the kind of he's not the, the bad kind. There are bad Nazis and good Nazis. Uh, the history is complicated. Now, the, the, what makes this what makes me laugh about this is, you know, not not that, that it isn't true that there's compli- that war is complicated, and you know, there's good and bad in everyone. There's there are good good and bad people fighting on both sides of any conflict. It's just that with a group like the Nazis, these same people, Politico Journal, you know, would would they would just say they would have the the one percent rule when it comes to Nazis. Like if you've got one drop, if you've got one you know, if you say are part of a group called the alt right and you uh, happen to be friends with certain people who would call themselves Nazis, but you are you're not a Nazi. Well, uh, you are still one because, uh, you know, you are the company you keep, you lie down with dogs, you wake up with fleas, and therefore you're just as bad as they are, and therefore you deserve to be punched. Because you should punch a Nazi just like Superman punched Nazis. And the alt-right are nothing but Nazis. This is what these same, these same creeps were saying, you know, just six or seven years ago. But now in Ukraine suddenly, ah! Uh, 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 you know, let's make some distinctions here, okay? Just like what I predicted. The idea that volunteers and conscripts were being allocated to the Waffen SS is a hard sell for our audiences conditioned to believe the SS's primary task was genocide. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. So, uh, so were they? Was the SS not? Not uh, genocidal. Not uh, didn't were they not genocidal in orientation? Have you guys been lying to us over the last seventy years? You know, so uh, I don't know. But this guy, Yaroslav Hunka, he was, if you'll rec- if you'll recall, uh, last year in twenty twenty three, he was applauded by the Canadian Parliament and. Uh, and by Trudeau and everybody, and then and then it came out that he was a part of this notorious um, battalion um, that was uh, affiliated with the SS. And now they're trying to say, well, he's the, the, there's good Nazis and bad Nazis, or he's not really a Nazi just because he fought with a Nazi battalion, or he you, you know he, he was he was fighting against the Russians and the Russians were bad. You know, so uh, so fighting with the Nazis against the Russians doesn't make you that bad. Suddenly, <laughs> suddenly they're say they're singing that tune. They never sang that kind of tune any time before. Um, which just shows you how absolutely absolutely without principle they are, and it shows you what a bunch of weasels they are. Um. And now let's skip to the present. Now, what I just showed you was something from Politico, which is a mainstream, uh, um, you know, piece of uh, of uh, uh, American uh, uh, quote unquote journalism, you know, uh, legacy journalism, uh, you know, high, uh, mainstream journalism, mainstream media. What I'm showing you now is something from Colin Liddell's site, which is not the mainstream, but, 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 comma, um, or however, comma, um, he, uh, as, as I've pointed out before, uh, Colin Liddell, my former partner in thought crime, Colin Liddell, has latched on to all of the anti-Russia, uh, neoliberal tropes with a vengeance and what the the article he's posting here is um is one that is defending stefan stefan bendera he's who who is an example of russian victim blaming according to whoever wrote the headline uh, of this article here so this is the person who supposedly wrote the article this might be a real person, or this might be one of um, one of Collins' uh, many sock accounts. 
So anyway, yesterday was the birthday of Ukrainian hero Stepan Bandera. And you remember in that video I, I cited, you know, just look up these these people. Look, look up Right Sector, look up um, Azov Battalion, look up uh, Stefan Bandera, and, uh, you know, you'll, that'll get you started. If his name evokes any, you know, as far as uh, Nazis, Nazis who were uh, in Ukraine uh, fighting against, uh, against Russia in World War II, if his name evokes any negative connotations in your mind, this might be because of the manipulative Russian narratives. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's, like, it's like all these people, it's like, oh, the Russians are just running rings around the rest of us. They're so crafty. They're so cunning. Um, they talk about the Russians the way that uh, a lot of people talk about Jews. Like, oh, they're just, you know, it's just in their blood. They, they just, they just lie and, uh, and deceive and manipulate and, and uh, rub their hands together with glee as they do it. You know, <laughs> that's, it's like, like, uh, like for Colin Liddell and, and others of his ilk. Um, they've, uh, they've, they've, tra they've, um, found a, a new, a new, uh, uh, sca uh, scapegoat. Um, anyhow, uh, so for many decades since the end of World War II, Russians have used the word Nazi to label to stigmatize, da 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 okay. Now, the, the, also the point of all, another irony here in all of this is, these were groups, uh, you know, that were fighting against the United States during World War II. Now, World War II was supposed to be the man the Manichaean battle between good and evil, right? That's how it's sold to us. That's still how they sell it to us today. So now we're supposed to make an about face and say that that uh, that people like Yaroslav Hunka who fought against the Americans as well as the Russians, as you know, you know, all, who fought against the Allies and with the Axis powers in World War II, and who was closely affiliated with the Nazi Party and and uh, wore Nazi regalia, and committed atrocities. Um, so uh, this here we got a very similar case, very similar circumstance, but this article is just trying to say, well, he was, uh, he's a scapegoat, and, uh, uh, he's, he, 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 uh, he wasn't really that bad because he was, because the Russians were bad, and he was fighting against the Russians, and, uh, so, and so calling him a Nazi is just, is just, uh, uh you know, that's just, that's just wrong. Maybe, maybe it's true in a way, but, he, uh, the article tries to make the the point that uh, uh, Russian, you know, Russian invasion and subsequent occupation was orders of magnitude more barbaric, harsh and brutal than German rule. This is a fact. Okay, so so uh, so fighting for the Nazis uh, is justifiable now, in certain circumstances. This is what. The author of this article is saying, and it's what Con Liddell is saying, whether or not he's the suck uh, uh, account that wrote this article, or uh, or whether he's just uh, publishing it um, on his site because, and uh, this is this is his site, so he you know it's an indication that uh, he is at least sympathetic to the argument that's being made here. So, what's up, Colin? You know, you who were who was talking who 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 all is always talking about how uh, the alt right, the dissident right, is just full of Nazis and blah blah blah, and and uh, uh, and now uh, the Nazis aren't so bad if they're fighting for Ukraine. I mean, you can't have it both ways. It's got to be one way or the other. Either Nazis are good uh, when they're uh, both when they're fighting for Ukraine and when they're uh, in, uh, you know, in in the United States, doing whatever they do, you know, going to Charlottesville and uh, making a hash of things and, and just fucking up, <laughs> and whatever, all the all the stuff that that uh, 
I mean, they, they haven't, let's face it, none of them have been all that effective. Um, none, none of the self-proclaimed Nazis or Nazi sympathizers have been terribly effective. Um, but nevertheless, uh, if, if they're in the West, if, if these, uh, if these Nazi, so-called Nazi groups are in the West, then, then people like Colin say that they're Russian stooges. So the Russians are setting up Nazis in the West. And yet in Ukraine, Colin is saying, oh, well, it's not so bad to be a Nazi. Just because you fought with the Nazis doesn't make you a Nazi. Just because you fought, you know, uh, with a battalion under the Nazi insignia and committed atrocities in the name of National Socialism, that doesn't make you a Nazi. Um, so, okay, this this author says Stepan Bandera was a hero, and he's celebrated as one in Ukraine today. Um, but he was a Nazi. All right, so I was right. That's that's where I will conclude this video. I was right. I'll just turn this camera around on myself right now so you can see me again. I was right. I call it. I will be receiving your plaudits and acclaim now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.